Amazing work right there. So listen, if all these great students are learning this great craft and they're all gunning for Lupita, right? It is so important that we show up for the plays, that we show up for the films, that we invest, that we sponsor if we can. And that is why we're having this discussion today because so much positive stuff is happening right here at the University of Nairobi. I'm joined by a panel of four three gentlemen and a lady. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I'm going to start with Mary because you're the lady here with me. How are you? Fine, thank you. Okay, tell me your name and what you're studying here, love. Okay, my name is Mary Mukami mm -hmm. and I'm studying literature and Kiswahili. All right. Yes. Um, how did you get into this program? Uh, I was contacted by our, our chair. He's called Martin and he requested me that I, if I could talk on behalf of performing arts students. Fantastic. Yes. Love. All right, gentlemen at the end, hello. Hello. How are you? I'm good. Great. What is your name? Uh, I'm Prata Sikangadi. Okay. Yeah, I'm a student at the University of Nairobi, uh, studying a Bachelor of Arts. I take uh, performing arts and geography. Now, these are, the, these are your lecturers, right? Yes. Important people. Hello, sir. Hello. How are you? Fantastic. Please introduce yourself. My name is Tom Odiambo. I teach in the Department of Literature. I teach Literature, Theatre, Arts and Film. Okay. And, sir? Simon Peter Timo. I teach Theatre and Film Studies. Okay. Looking at that film that we've just seen, Simon, and, and the kind of work that has happened here, you're very involved uh, in, as an institution in the film industry. Give, give us an overview. Right now we are coordinating a program for the Ministry of Education which is called Film for Schools and schools have been competing in film production now for the last six years. Um, the film you've just watched was, uh, we did that in collaboration with Kakamega High School, that is where we had the set and uh, the script was workshopped by the students. We had lecturers like Dr. Nyudo also acting in it mm -hmm. and so on and so forth. So. It was a case of trying to make sure we touch base largely with even populations that are outside the university in this kind of practice because film, as you know, does not discriminate. It's the human enterprise. Right. So actually that was, the, uh, that was the impetus of that kind of motive and also to give our students a hands-on skill so that they can go and see how do you do a set, for instance? How do you prepare for a film production? How do you go through the paces of the actual process? And we did that in Kakamega. We were actually in Kakamega for around three, four days. Oh, and wow. Yeah, and okay. we, we did, it was quite a lot of work. I mean, three, four days for yeah. a 40 minute film, you know, that's a lot of work. We'll start at six in the morning to midnight. Wow. For four days. Yeah. yeah. And looking at, of course, at the environment, the community around it, and, and the kind of buzz that you must have created yeah. uh, while you were there, um, interest? A lot of interest, yeah. because uh, we also had, you know, there were, there were roles of, um, in the film, there are students. And we had actual students from Kakamega High School joining our students to form the cast. Okay. We also had students from St. Joseph's Girls in Kakamega, mm -hmm. who also came to, you know, play the roles of the girl schools and that kind of thing. So the interest from the students was amazing. And that has been seen in the film festival because annually when the Ministry of Education comes up with the drama festival and when we started the film festival, mm -hmm. in 2012 we had 37 films. In 2013 we had 74 films. In 2014 we had 137 films. Wow. In 2015 we had 161 films. And this year we had 214 films. So the interest is growing. That's amazing. Right. That yeah. deserves a clap, for sure. I didn't even know that. That's so great. And you can even see the trophies, everybody, that uh, they've come bearing. We'll speak about that in just a second. Mary, for you, um, as a young lady, before you even decided to choose a course that you wanted to study, as a young girl, what did you want to be? And do you feel like you're, you're on your path to becoming that? Yes. Uh, okay, when I completed high school, uh -huh. that was back in 2012, I wanted to become a teacher. And actually, I'm on the road to that. Okay. But then I got interest in theater. And so when I came to campus, I felt like, I felt because uh, I, I wanted to do education. Yeah. But uh, trying by, by all means, it didn't go through. So I opted for Bachelor of Arts. Okay. And then I landed on literature and Kiswahili. I mean, I did performing arts, but I never did literature. Um, how, do, how do the two work? Literature is about creativity. Right. Performing arts is about acting out the creativity. Okay. So inevitably, I mean, the idea is that students who are performing arts will read plays, 
whether they are great Shakespearean plays, whether they are right. local it. plays yeah. in Gikuyu. Okay. okay. Yes, and then translate that on stage. And can I you think do? Can you, sorry to interrupt you. Can you do performing? Art? I mean, can you do literature without doing performing arts? You yes. can. That okay. has been the normal program. Okay. But now you have the two mediated because when the students get out of the university, mm -hmm. for example, uh, people get out of the university and they go to schools to ask for jobs. And they ask, can you teach uh, language? They say yes. So can you teach literature? They say yes. But have you ever been in a play, in a setup where theater is performed? Because theater in schools is a big thing. Yes. It's, big, it's not just big business for schools. We should emphasize here that now the new curriculum is actually returning performing arts mm -hmm. in the primary school. So yes. these fellows actually, when they go out there, they may volunteer they may end up as teachers, and they'll have to teach people in standard three, four, five, dance, uh, music, uh, performing, all these things to do with animation, all these yeah. things are going back to primary school. I did music in primary school, right. but then I got surprised that subsequently there was no music, and these things are coming back. So a student of literature will have to really have all these skills. A young man, looking at, of course, I can't pronounce your name very well, so I'm trying not to. Tell me again. It's uh, Pratasik. Pratasik. Yeah. What does that mean? Uh, I, I have no idea. It's beautiful. Uh, <laughs> I love it. <laughs> it's such a good name. It's such a good name. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, your parents were obviously creative, yeah. all right? Okay. And, and I'm sure when you told them this is what you wanted to do, they were cool. Yes. As yes, a young yes, man, what did you want to be? And do you feel like you're on that path? Okay. Uh, the funny bit is that uh, growing up, I always wanted to be a surgeon. I wanted to do something in medicine. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, after my phone four, after getting the results, uh, I was disappointed. I didn't manage to get the grade to go for the medical course. Okay. So in me, uh, I always had this passion of uh, being on stage, uh, of actually being part of theater. And uh, actually, in a, when I was in a secondary school, I was also part of a drama club. So mm -hmm. I kind of had some foundation. So when I had the chance to come to the University of Nairobi, and uh, I was told that there's a course, performing arts. Then I got interested. I said, wow. So finally, even if I didn't manage to go for medicine, I'm still on the line of getting what I wanted. That's fantastic. Yeah. I'll tell you a story. I have, a, I have one of my favorite shows that I like to binge on is Grey's Anatomy. And it's an amazing show. It's in its 14th season, doing very well globally. Um, at least two and three of the doctors on there wanted to be actual medical doctors. And look at them now, acting yeah, as yeah. doctors. Mm -hmm. That's going to be you, right, guys? Yeah, you're going to do a health <laughs> show, you. and then you, you can do your thing, <laughs> thank right? You, thank you. Uh, Simon, talking, of course, about the number of films that you've just told us about, there's one thing for these amazing students to be working so hard and for your department to be working so hard to churn out these great films. If Kenyans out there are not watching them, if we're not discussing them, if we're not taking some of the discussions and the topics very seriously and, and bringing on national conversations coming from some of these films, then what happens? Do they just sit in a library? And what, I mean, is it on us as Kenyans to, to, to try and participate? Or is there a mechanism to sort of showcase in, at IMAX, at 20th century, at Audion, that kind of thing? Now, right now, the Ministry of Education is drawing up a policy. Okay. Because uh, up to this point, when they introduced film in schools, they didn't have a clear policy, and therefore the, the door was wide open for exploitation. Right. And so what is happening at present is that uh, policy is being drawn where schools will be guided on which way forward after the festival. Okay. We have had a lot of interest from uh, several media houses, mm -hmm that and um, you know they want to buy the films but the question is on what basis there's no criteria right so that is being set right now and that's why none of the films has been released yet oh yeah because okay. again the fear of piracy you know kenya yes. you pro you pro produce one movie today you're yeah. selling it at a thousand shillings exactly. by evening somebody's selling them at 50 shillings exactly, you know? and exactly. It's wrong. It's yeah. so there's a policy being developed right now okay. which will now 
allow schools even to rake in money for their future projects and even to help in the school projects. Okay. Yeah. Amazing. Right. Now, one of the things I can definitely say is that this this auditorium is a state of the art. Um, you know, it can compete with the best of the best in New York and in and in any other country. Looking at, of course, the relationship with the universe, uh, the the National Theater, and really actually seeing that the government is getting serious when you see refurbishments, when you see a place like this, uh, of course, at the university, in terms of supporting and, and giving the resources and everything that is required. Have we, are we there yet? <laughs> I always say that Kenyans live in hope. So that's the hope. But the practical thing about theatre is that if you can't go for rehearsals, if we can't really think creatively about this, we, you can have this stage but you need policies, you need energy, you need the initiative to actually get people to be on stage. At the university, as a member of the, uh, the Moy University Traveling Theatre Group, mm. I used to leave the library at, at 10 and stay on stage in the theatre from 11 to 3. Mm -hmm. I mean, you probably these students can't do that because of this and that. Yeah. But I think investment in facilities is so important. Uh, like the National Theatre. But you realize that the National Theatre is limited in terms of the seating, mm -hmm. in terms of uh, 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 rehearsal space. And that's something that one hopes that this kind of setup would address, both for us yes. as people who teach, but who also have actually a University of Nairobi traveling theatre group, and even the Kenya National Theatre. I have got no idea why when this, uh, the wall was built, yeah. there's no gate in between the Kenya National Theatre and be. the University of Nairobi because yeah. they used to be one. Right. If, you asked, uh, if you asked Ngugi Wathiong, who used to teach in the department, mm -hmm. and who used to produce plays at the National Theatre, they are, you, you just crossed over. Right. So this kind of... That uh, synergy was there, and this yes. kind of like cuts it. Yeah, yeah, yeah so yeah. this kind of stage, and that kind of stage should be used uh, Simultaneously. by both groups. Absolutely. Yeah. The professional group feeding into our academic program and our academic program feeding the other way. You say that we should have discussions about this. Right. This is a good start. In fact, we are hoping that we'll appear on this stage again. Yes, yeah. you will. I hope the next time you come, you come with a play. Oh, yeah. You mm -hmm. can just perform here for us, right? Absolutely. All right, guys, I can't. There's so much gold in my eye, I can't even. All right, look at all these trophies. All right, clap for yourselves, everybody. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> okay, there's a lady sitting at the front. I'm going to ask. Hi. Hi. How are you? I'm good. Excellent. Look at are these trophies yours. Of course. Fantastic. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. All right, what is your name? Um, Evelyn Mutan. And what do you study, Han? I'm um, taking Bachelor of Arts. Bachelor of Arts. Journalism and Media Studies. What do you want to do? I want to be a journalist. Okay. What kind of journalist? See, people a think presenter. I'm a journalist. A TV presenter. Yeah, of course. Yeah. See, I tried to do news. Didn't work out for me. I'm a TV presenter. I am, yeah. I'm not objective. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And uh, what year are you in? Fourth year. Fourth year. Yes. So you just have one year to go and, and you're good to go. Yes. All right. Talk to me a little bit about, I guess, the, the milestones and then seeing and seeing some of this. Mary, I'm going to give you that question. Uh, what does it feel like when you guys go out there and you win? Uh, for one, it feels, it feels so good mm. because we put a lot of effort on stage. Because uh, before the trophies, we have to go through a series of rehearsals. Yeah. And rehearsals, we do them on a daily basis. So we like meet uh, at 2 p.m. till late. And this is done on a daily basis. Okay. I mean, uh, before the drama festivals and all, we have to put a lot of effort. And people have to sacrifice a lot of their time. Some go to a point of missing classes. Mm -hmm. And so when we go to stage and we express our talents, we show people that we really got the talent. And at, at the end of the day, we get the trophies, then it's, it's an achievement. It's great, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. And then for you, um, looking at, of course, all the, the achievements, making that decision first to get into the course, and then seeing, seeing how much you've grown as a young man. Tell me about that. OK. It feels good because uh, in the end, uh, you know that uh, you're on the right track. You're not uh, going off the track. And uh, when you get to win trophies for what you're doing, after all the effort that you've put into it, 
it's rewarding. It is really rewarding. Yeah. Absolutely yeah. great. I love it. Um, one of the things I definitely can say as we wind up is there needs to be a lot more support um, and, and, and recognition. Um, looking at that and looking at, of course, long-term strategy, I, I feel like this partnership is really great between NTV and the university. We can even highlight some of these films for you on this show. But what other possible partnerships would you be looking for just to boost the program even more? And we also need to, to sensitize, especially you know what I would like to call uh, the companies production production houses in terms of collaborations right because uh, uh, <clears throat> one of the main problems we have in Kenya is lack of financing of film productions and that can be done if uh, the entire fraternity of not only film industry but I'm talking about the industry in general you know, if bro is brought and made conscious, because quite a number of times they want to do adverts. Right. Who does that for them? The filmmakers. Mm. And they only pay for that and then forget about film production. And yet we have the same, same talent that is able to give us major shows, right. major films. So we are still looking forward to a time when a Kenyan film is going to go to the Oscar Awards, you know, in a, yes. in a big way. Absolutely. You know? With multiple nominations. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And that can only happen once we bring everybody on board. Absolutely. We have money in the country. We are not saying we are poor. We have money. But I'm not sure we are channeling it the right way. Very well said. Unless we really look at our production industry, and I'm talking about the entertainment industry in particular, mm -hmm. and give it the support it needs. I don't think we are going to go far. We'll keep talking about this throughout. It's absolutely true. Yeah. Tom, when you look at what's going on, for example, in New York, uh, when it comes to theater and the kind of money that the industry, just theater alone, um, stage acting can actually generate for an industry. Are we there yet? I mean, I know that plays like Because You Said So, uh, Jesus Christ Superstar, there's all these little, little things going on within the country, and people are trying. But how do we fill? This is a huge auditorium because of a play. Rarely have I seen it. But Diamond will fill this place. Vera Sadika will fill this place. You know what I mean? But our priorities off. What can you say? Remember when you went to nursery school? Yeah. If you went to nursery school, <laughs> I didn't. Mm -hmm. I went to Standard One Street. Wow, There's you were smart called... guy. Come on, let's clap for <laughs> lecture at home. <laughs> it's just that there were no nursery schools there. Oh, okay. But I was writing on a tablet, okay. which you only wrote on to recently. Anyway, <laughs> in nursery school, they do something called role play. All the teaching is through role play. You, you act a journalist, you act a doctor. If we started this thing at the nursery school, primary school, secondary school, and we went on that way, and we have a policy that clearly makes uh, 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 film, theater, mm -hmm. acting, professional, then it's very possible to bring these energies together. We should always actually get a lot of people from the ministry, yes. the media, and the industry to go to Nigeria and stay there for just one yeah, week to true. figure out how is it that theater halls in Nigeria fill up? Yeah. How is it that a film from Nigeria uh, by somebody, a known director, yeah. ends up in New York? Yes. A play from Nigeria ends up in Broadway. If a play from Nigeria, Kenya ends up in Broadway, we celebrate for 10 years. It's true. <laughs> during which you don't. So we need this uh, twinning. Eh? He's talking about twinning with the industry. I want the twinning of the media, the schools that teach theater and film and primary schools and secondary schools. Why are we twinning our towns with cities in Europe right. when we can't twin our universities with colleges and, and uh, media secondary houses. schools? Yeah. And this is where you build a culture of people who consume. Nice. And we, what, we, what you're talking about is consumption. And consumption pushes you to be creative every day. So you won't drink this juice the whole week because somebody will say, test this. If we made the, the people from prime children all the way to the university to start testing, seeing theater as something you take yeah. your girlfriend out to yeah. on the weekend. Makes you look not, not on mm, WhatsApp. Imagine. You say, baby, let's go watch a play. Yeah. Then let's play subsequently uh, uh, um, in a play like yes. that. Yes. Atengia box. Yeah, yeah. Atengia box. Atengia yeah, box. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Absolutely. What's the future of these people? <laughs> Very true. And they should also study PR. You know, oh, you, we component. must sell what we have. Okay. Give a hand to these wonderful guys. Everybody. So great. Thank you for being here. Thank you so, so much for being here.